Step 4. Examples. Now that we know how to write down a Fourier series for a 2 pi periodic function, let's apply it to some examples. Our first example is a Dirac delta function. This function is defined as follows. dx is equal to 0 when x is not equal to 0 and positive infinity when x is equal to 0. So this is a very peculiar function, but it's very useful in physics, engineering, mathematics. So get used to it. And it looks basically like this. Here with the blue line, we see that delta x is everywhere 0, except at the point x is equal to 0, where it shoots uh, off to infinity. We can also have delta x minus 1. So in that case, we require that x minus 1 is equal to 0, meaning that the function goes to infinity at x is equal to 1. And there is one constraint on delta function, and that is that the area under the, under the delta function uh, when you integrate from minus infinity to infinity is equal to 1. So how can, how can this be that the area under the function is uh, finite while the function itself diverges, goes to infinity? Well, that's because it's zero everywhere except at an infinitesimally small uh, point, meaning that the peak that goes to infinity uh, is n does not have any width. Basically, it has zero width. And in that way, we can satisfy this constraint. And furthermore, using this constraint, we have this following uh, identity, which we will use repeatedly in this step. And that is, if you take the inner product of any function f of x with the Dirac delta function, it is a nice probability that it pulls out the value of a, uh, uh, the value of the function at x equals a. Why is that? If you take this integral, then everywhere it's zero, except at the point x is equal to a. So this entire in integral then becomes f of a. So now that we uh, uh, familiarized ourselves with the delta function, let's compute the Fourier series. And we're going to start with the coefficients bn. So to remind you, these are the coefficients for the signs in our Fourier series. So all we have to do is just use our formula derived in the previous step bn is equal to 1 over pi times this whole integral. And here you see why we had the identity on the previous slide. We have delta x times sine nx dx, and integrating over our period, which is, goes from minus pi to pi. So this gives us the value of sine nx at x equals to 0. So sine of 0 is just equal to 0. So all of the coefficients for the signs, all of the bn's in our Fourier series are zero, they vanish. So why is that? We can look at the parity of the functions that are involved. Delta x is an even function, meaning that delta x has the same value as delta minus x. You can easily verify it from the definition of the Dirac delta function, while sine is an odd function as we have seen in the previous steps. The product of an even function and an odd function is also an odd function. And if we integrate it over this, uh, this interval right here, from minus pi to pi, then we get that the integral is zero. Good. Now, let's look at the coefficients for the cosines, the ans. Here, we use our formula again. So an is equal to the inner product, uh, of delta, uh, delta x and cosine nx rescaled by 1 over pi. And in this case, again, we use the property of the delta function that this entire integral basically just pulls out a 0 and puts it into the cosine. So what we have is 1 over pi times cosine of 0, and we know that cosine of 0 is just 1, therefore a n is equal to 1 over pi. Therefore, we're done with our task. The Fourier series of the Dirac delta function is given as follows. We've got our first term, a0, and that's just 1 over pi, rescaled by a factor of 2, plus all of the other ans. We've got here a1, a2, a3, multiplying cos x, cos 2x, cos 3x, and so on. There is one strange thing about this Fourier series, and that is that all of the ans, they are equal, 
meaning all of the higher harmonics have the same weight, meaning all of those higher harmonics are equally important to, uh, for the, uh, to reproduce the Dirac delta function. Often this is not uh, true when we talk about smooth functions. You will see that if you have a smooth function, well-behaved function, and you find the Fourier series, usually there's only very few frequencies that are important to reliably reproduce uh, the function in terms of its Fourier series, and all of the higher or the lower uh, harmonics are not so important. This is not true for the delta function. Every single harmonic, whether it's high frequency or low frequency, is equally important. And this is due to the singular nature of the Dirac delta function where it's zero, zero everywhere, and suddenly, when x is equal to zero, it shoots off to infinity. So this concludes our first example. Now let's look at a different example. Oh, one second. Also, we want to see how quickly it, the Dirac delta function actually converges, how quickly the Fourier series converges to the Dirac delta function. So we are plotting this Fourier series right here for higher and higher uh, values of n. So you can see that even if we take uh, n equals 5 terms, it doesn't look anything like the Dirac delta function. We go up to 50 terms, and we can see that there's a little peak starting to develop uh, around x equals to 0. And as we increase n, this peak is becoming more narrow and narrow and higher and higher, while everywhere else the function remains close to 0. And this shows you again what uh, uh, I just said in the previous slide, that all the higher frequencies are equally important uh, to uh, reproduce the Dirac delta function as the low frequencies. So now let's look at a different example. Let's look at a square wave. And that has the following definition. On this interval, from minus pi to zero, it's equal to minus one. While on this interval, from zero to pi, it's equal to one. So it really looks like a step if you graph it. Here it's flat, it's minus one, and once x reaches zero, it goes up and it stays at one. So how do we compute the Fourier series coefficients? First, we examine the function and we see that it's um, odd, meaning f of minus x is equal to minus f of x. So what this tells us is immediately that all of the cosine coefficients vanish, meaning all of the ans are zero. Why? Because here we have an odd function multiplying an even function, the product is odd, therefore this integral vanishes. So all we have to do is now we have to compute the bn coefficients. So here we go. We plug it into our formula for the coefficients bn. And what we do is we split the integral. We integrate from minus pi to 0. That's this integral right here. Plus the integral from 0 to pi. That's this term right here. If we actually plot our function, so here we are plotting uh, the square wave function multiplying sine of x, we see that it has the following, following shape. So we see that the values of these two integrals are in fact equal. So what we can do is we can just rewrite the sum of these two integrals as a single integral. So now we have 2 times 2 over pi times this integral of sine and x going from 0 to pi. This we can uh, easily evaluate, and it's equal to the following. It's 2 over pi times 1 minus cosine nx over n. Now, what is this expression for uh, different, different values of n? Let's consider when n is even. When n is even, we see that we have cosine of 2 pi, cosine of 4 pi, cosine of 6 pi, all of those equal to 1, meaning this uh, expression in this fraction here, 1 minus 1 is 0, therefore this entire integral is equal to 0. Whereas when n is equal to, uh, n is an odd, num odd integer, then here cosine of 1 pi, cosine of 3 pi, then this uh, uh, will be equal to 2, therefore the entire uh, integral evaluates to 4 over pi n which is our uh, coefficient bn. So there we have it. This is the Fourier uh, series for our square wave function. Unlike in the case of the delta function, here we see that each higher harmonic is being rescaled uh, by its corresponding n. 
So even though this function has also a step, its behavior is not as singular as the Dirac delta function. And the higher harmonics are a little bit less important in terms of reproducing uh, the square wave function in, ter uh, in terms of Fourier series. And this is what it looks like. Already for the first five terms, when n equals to five, we can see that it's kind of starting to look like our desired step, uh, like our desired square wave function. For n equals 50, already we can see that in this region it's pretty flat, very close to minus one, and then around x equals to zero, it quickly jumps up and it stays very close to one. And increasing uh, the number uh, of n, the number of terms in our sum, just reinforces this behavior. So those are the two examples of uh, application of Fourier series. See you in the next step.